Okay, C. Lindelof videos. Just wanted to make this really simple, straightforward video on limits of polynomial and rational functions. And what I want you to kind of do as you listen to this video is just think algebra for a second instead of thinking calculus because we have to have a really good strategy for how we're going to attack limits. And the first thing that I would do is just ask myself is does that limit exist naturally? Do I need to do anything? Do I need to do any calculus? So here we say that let p of x be a polynomial. We say the limit of limit of p of x as x approaches c is equal to p of c. You're like, what the hell does that mean? What that means is, let's define maybe p of x and say, let p of x equal 5x plus 2. Well, you tell me, what number could you put in for x that wouldn't make any sense? And this is one of those questions, like it's the forest through the trees. People get so confused. I'm saying to you, there is no value of x that makes this thing do anything really weird, that makes it not make sense. And therefore, Knowing that what this says, this limit as x goes to c, we're saying as this x goes to this value. So you're like, okay, what's the limit of p of x as x goes to 2? So, okay, well, what's p of 2, right? This is p of c. What's p of 2? So p of 2 is 5, because it's 5x, right? x we said was 2 plus 2. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12, so is 12. Somebody's going to, I love you guys, but somebody's going to comment, Charlie, why did you decide, why did you say, why is x 2? You tell me what you want it to be, and let, let it be that number. So this is what I want you to do, just for your own uh, ind individual proof. You come up with some value here. Say, okay, uh, you decided, think of, a, think of a number. You have your number, your number was 7. So you're like, okay, I want to know what is the limit of p of x as x goes to 7. Why 7? Because that's the number you chose, I guess. So it's 5x plus 2, so it's 5. You said that x is 7 plus 2. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37. So equals 37. So what I want you to get is that as we're coming up with these strategies for how we're taking limits, let your initial, let your primary strategy, your first strategy, be to evaluate the function at that value c, at the number. Just plug the number into the equation and see if it comes back making sense. So here's the second part of this thing. So we have this and we're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. The next part, the rational functions, is the same thing. You just have to be a little bit more careful. So what I'm going to say is this. I'm saying, okay, what is the limit of p of x as x goes to c if p of x is a, ra is a rational function? So all I'm going to do is just come up and say, you know what? Give me an example of a rational function, and I'll have it be 2x plus 3 over x plus 1. So it, in the same way, it should be p of c. And what we do here is this. We look at this p of x thing, and we say that it's r of x. We look at this as if it was a compound function, a uh, composite function, and we have q of x at the bottom. All that's important is that the q of x, the bottom part, can't go to zero. Well, of course it can't go to zero because that would be undefined, right? You'd have a number over zero. That doesn't make any sense, right? So as long as this bottom piece is not undefined. So let's look at this for example. So for example, we look at this again, and we say, okay, in, this, in the case of this function, what if we wanted to know 2? The limit of p of x as x goes to 2, is that p of 2? Well, p of 2, I look at this, I'm like, okay, 2 times x, we said x was 2, because that's the number you chose, plus 3. You chose 2, so x is down here, so x is 2 here, right? So 2 plus 1, so we get uh, 4 times, uh, excuse me, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, 2 plus 1 is 3, so we get 7 thirds, don't we? So in this case, we get is 7 thirds. And all I'm saying to you is, you choose the value. It's not because it's 2. I chose 2 out of my whatever. You choose the value, and, and it's going to work for you. This is going to work good. However, look at this for a second, and just look at this from an algebraic standpoint. You say, okay, what would happen if I had p of negative 1? Like, okay, I'd have 2 times negative 1 plus 3 at the top. That's going to be okay, isn't it? But you're going to have negative 1 plus 1 at the bottom. There's the problem. So here's the problem. 
So given this, we might need to do some calculus. We might need to look at this in a different way. We might need to investigate this using different tools. But our initial strategy should always be plug in the value. Plug in the value. That's actually not my dog barking. It's somebody calling me. But okay, sorry. So we go with this. I hope that you get this, and if, not, if you got nothing else from this video, I hope that you got the strategy that when, I, when you start to evaluate limits, that your first strategy, your initial strategy, must be just plug in the number. Plug in whatever number you get here. Plug it into the equation and see if it comes back defined. If it does, you've, you've done it. You're done with it, okay? So something to think about. You guys, we can definitely do this. Remember when you're doing your, al when you're doing your calculus, you've got to be focused on your algebra also. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, you know I'm always available for you. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do.